PCA workbench, and Dave, yes, I'm sir. going to tell you an amberjack <laughs> is yeah. something that you don't yeah. quickly forget. That's the only fish that I ever passed off. I was catching, I was catching some bit. Well, that's not true. Uh, there's probably somebody out there who has something <laughs> on me. But anyway, I was in the Keys one time, and I was doing a, a boat review for Pursuit, and uh, we were down there fishing for amberjacks, and I caught a couple of them already. We were in 400 feet of water on the old oh. submarine wreck. And I caught a couple that weighed 70, 80 pounds, and I, I hooked another one, and I told the mate, oh man, I got the bottom, and I handed it to him. He says, oh no, you've got a fish on. I go, no buddy, you got that one. That's it, it's all you. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it again. The two, two was enough. And that's the thing about the amberjack, you know, he's he's a jackfish, so he's fighting from the bottom to the top. You know, wherever you hook him, if you hook him in midwater, you hook him on the bottom, he's gonna fight you all the way to the top no he doubt. doesn't he does not play he's got that big uh moon-shaped tail and a and a stout body and he's just all muscle and and he puts it to you they you know he's the house of pain like you said so what you're going to want you're going to want uh you're going to come with some you know good tackle right you know 20 30 pound tackle you know is minimum uh especially if you're catching great big ones you know that might even be too light but uh, this this will Is probably handle Az most. Azor 80. We loaded up with yep. 65 pound suffix braid. Right. That's a 20 30 pound rod, yeah. and uh, you, you should be able to handle most of the amberjacks you'll catch. And and what what you want to do is you want to find them first. And you know they're going to be on top of any kind of structure, a reef, or wreck. Uh, you know if you have oil rigs in your area, right. any any big structure that that they're going to be hanging on it. And what you do is when you come up to the one of those structures, you have your sounder on and you look for them and you'll see them. They'll be hanging in mid water above the wreck. If you're in, you know, 200 feet of water, they'll probably be about hundred feet. You know, right. they're going to be somewhere in that range, you know, pretty close to mid water. And when you start marking them, that's when you, when you start fishing for them. If you're not marking them, move so on to another spot. We can drop a jig, bucktail jig down. You can do that. First, first thing you want to try is if you if you see a bunch of them down there, a good thing to do is if you got chum, stop and do a lot of chum, uh, small amberjack, will be in big schools and you'll bring them to the top usually. You'll see a lot of the little ones will come up to the top. The big ones will be down below them. And what you'll do is you'll try to chum some of those things up and then you can throw a jig in there or a live bait. The preferable bait though is probably a live bait that you catch on that rig, rig or wreck with a good sabiki rig. You get you some you know, good sabiki rigs and drop them down there and catch you a nice uh, anything, a grunt, a right. little beeliner or whatever. And if you're bringing that thing up and you start getting them picked off, you know you're in a good spot, you know? And then if you can get those baits up to the surface, you drop them back down and you now try you to get them in that spot. Now you don't have to fight them in 200 feet, you That's can fight right. them in 70 feet. Exactly, start at 100, but he's probably gonna, <laughs> he's probably gonna make it to the bottom before you get him stopped anyway, especially if you're using a spinning rod. So Dave, let me ask you something. Is there yeah. anything that we can do to help beat the pain? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to have a belt and a rod with a gimbal on it. You know, the spinning rod, it's got a gimbal on the bottom. And, and what that means, it's got the little X on the bottom that'll fit into a, into a gimbal on a belt. And if you have a good, if you have a good belt mm -hmm. and a good shoulder harness, you're going to go a long ways to keep your, you know, back in shape because they will, they'll bend you over really good. And, and that's, yeah. you know, that's where and, it hurts And, and the, the, the gimbal keeps your, keeps your rod steady. And if you're, you know, if you're not a, a seasoned angler or, or your little upper body strength is not that great like mine, <laughs> you know, it, it, it keeps it from spinning, yeah. you know, it keeps the rod from spinning in the, in the holder. But I, love, I like to use any of these jigs. Uh, butterfly jigs work great for them. Uh, really great, you know, you drop that thing all the way to the bottom, jig it up to where you see them on the, a little bit above to where you see the marks, and then drop it back down again if you don't get a bite and do it all over again, you know. You don't want to go up too high, and you want to make sure that you drop below them because they will go down to get stuff. They, unlike a bass or anything like that, they'll go down and follow it. And when you're dropping a bait, sometimes they'll hit it on the way down. So they're they're good to eat. Yeah, they are good to eat if you smoke them. That's pretty work. I appreciate <laughs> you giving us the little extra tip on the belts. No worries. Yeah, Bree, I know you like using a belt. So where are we going next? I do, and cushions are great, and I like to jig for amberjacks as well.